Hey everyone, I'm Jay Smith, and this is Bradley Kendall, and this is After Further Review, where we're going to do our best to cover the entire college football landscape in 60 minutes or less. So Bradley, After Further Review. Houston, we have a problem. So we'll start with Houston, um, and coming into this week, you know, I, we talked about last week, I was really high on Houston. Yeah. I thought they were really primed to pretty much go undefeated up until the uh, Louisville game, and then, then they come into Navy, and Navy throws five passes, gets 63 rushes, and bull rushes them. I mean, we, well, we know that Navy is a rush-dominant team. We yeah. know that, that passing the ball, they're similar to Georgia Tech in the way that they run their offense. Um, I didn't expect them to hang 46 up on Houston. It was, it was just kind of one of those games that I really did not pay attention to going into the weekend. Like, you know, I knew that Houston was playing Navy, but I yeah. didn't really give Navy – much of a chance. I really didn't either. After they got, I think they got beat by Air Force the week before. Yeah, it, they it, weren't playing well. Navy season just wasn't going well up until yeah. that point. They didn't have Keenan Reynolds from last year, so they really didn't. They didn't have a lot of returning pieces. And Navy hasn't beaten a top. I don't think they've beaten a ranked team in in several years since South Carolina. I think back in like '84. Yeah, it's it's been a long time since, yeah. especially since they've they've won at home. So. You know, great win for their program. I, I saw a video of the students, uh, the cadets, rushing the field after the game. Obviously a big win for their program. Yeah. And if you're Houston... That really knocks you out. I mean, it's, I hate well, to say it, Well, not necessarily. But. Because if they can beat Louisville, if they... I mean, because yeah. realistic... I mean, I'm not saying they're, they're, they're going to, but if they're able to, you know, take care of, uh, of Louisville, then... What do you do with them? They're eleven and one. They yeah. have a win against one of the, arguably the best teams in the country. Mm -hmm. So where do you put Houston? Their chances are slim. They obviously have a bad loss now, and their schedule's really going to oh, yeah. hurt them. Oh yeah. They, they would have two good wins if they beat Louisville and Oklahoma, but I, I just think, especially because they're not a Power Five team, they really had to run the table. So you're you're going to go ahead and cross them out? Of the, I mean, I'm going to cross think, them out I unless think something they, really catastrophic happens to all the rest of the. But power eleven five. and eleven and one, I I feel like they got to go to a Big Six or They'll New Year's Six. Big six. Yeah, because UCF bowl. did it a couple years ago. They lost one game and they mm -hmm. still made the Big Six. Mm -hmm. so. Especially now, now if they lose to Louisville, then we're looking at a different story. Then yeah. then I think your chances uh, diminish greatly. But yeah, and especially for Louisville, I mean, we're going to get to this later, but that that really hurts their their chances of creeping back up yeah, and not winning a conference championship. Their strength of schedule just went down. It did. Uh, they really needed a good. Houston team to be undefeated coming uh, into that game. Definitely. And the next game we're going to look at was an ACC matchup. Uh, Virginia Tech, UNC. Virginia Tech, they creeped back into the top 25. I think mm -hmm. they were sitting at 25th. Yep. Now, this game was at UNC. It was um, raining. It was pouring in rain. the middle, yeah. uh, Right in the middle of the hurricane, uh, similar to the, the, <laughs> the Notre Dame <laughs> – NC State slugfest. So you saw a lot of down numbers for both teams. But yeah. what I really did not see coming was Virginia Tech hanging up 34 on the Tar yeah. Heels. I mean, UNC never even got in the end zone. I think what's more surprising is UNC only scoring three points. Yeah. I they mean, never, after I mean, the high-powered no offense downs. the last two weeks, they beat Florida State with 37 points. I mean, they now, didn't have anything clicking. Now, granted, it was in the middle of a – I mean, a monsoon. I mean, the, the, I don't think the field yeah. conditions. I didn't watch uh, a whole lot of the game, but the field conditions did not look as bad as NC State. Oh, that I mean, was, there was terrible. Half of the field was in standing water uh, for the majority of the game. I think they actually delayed it. Um, they had like a forty-five minute delay before the, the start half, of the third yeah. quarter, just because the field conditions were so bad. Um, credit though to the fans that stuck around the entirety of that game with NC State being able to to, yeah. to pull out win. But yeah, for UNC, I, I mean, I know the conditions were bad. But then again, Virginia Tech still was able to handle that and put up. It just 34. doesn't take away from the fact that Virginia Tech beat them by 31, yeah. and they home. did it with a kind of a lack of offense. I mean, their quarterback only had 75 passing yards. They obviously well, ran in those conditions. Yeah. 75 passing yards is, and they were really still able to move the ball well and score 34 points. Even yeah, with that. yeah. Now, were there uh, who won the turnover battle? Do you know? Is there anything um, pulled up on that turnover battle? Let's I imagine see. It would their be quarterback Virginia didn't Tech. throw any interceptions. Mitch Trubisky threw two interceptions. Okay. I would imagine there was a ton of fumbles. Oh, yeah. Miss snaps um, and mishandled. But Virginia Tech, I mean, completely handled every asset of the game, every facet of the game. They, they played better football under terrible conditions. Yeah. Terrible, terrible conditions. And that definitely helped them. But, sure. I mean, you look at this Virginia Tech team and Justin Puente, what a job coming in his first year and really yeah. turning this program around from where yeah. they were last yeah. year. Yeah, so far so good. I wouldn't say they're turned around. I wouldn't classify mm -hmm. them. They're definitely in a better position than they were last year. Possibly. Sure. They're, they're yeah. only up and coming, I guess you could say, like Miami. Yeah, maybe. and that, that helps because in terms of the ACC Coastal, that knocks Carolina two losses now. Yeah. Now they're 2-1 and one in the conference, so the conference is really what matters. But right. That gets them a win over the team that could contend with them in the Coastal. For sure, yeah. for sure. Next game that we're going to look at was an SEC matchup with A&M hosting Tennessee. This was game of the week. Game day, yep. Really 
really lived up to the hype, honestly. I mean, it, it was did. a good, I mean, good game, double overtime. Yeah, I mean, go, midway through the game, it was like 28-7, Texas A&M. We were like, yep. okay, this is Tennessee's luck's finally run out. Yep. But look at that. Butch Jones gets his, rallies his troops. and Pulled back a 21-point deficit. All of a sudden, they were, they were tied. And I think this says more about A&M's <laughs> ability to outlast Tennessee, an, yet another Tennessee surge. Yeah. Because Tennessee's been doing this all year. Yeah. I mean, it's it just... It, we knew there was going to come a point where they mm-hmm. were not going to be able to pull it out. But I think this says a lot about a and I know it was at home, but it was still a double overtime game. I think the difference was between Tennessee, their games before they were able to pull it out. This is a much better team they played in Texas A&M, and A&M was actually able to close the game out. But even but do you, if you think that that game is at Tennessee, do you give a and I mean, I know that A&M... Yeah, I, th- I think A&M was the better... I don't know, actually. That's tough. If it was at Tennessee, it might be a little different. Yeah, yeah honestly. Especially at overtime. Now... I don't. I don't even see Tennessee getting in a twenty-one point hole at home. But no, you wouldn't think so. But then again, that was. The, I think the floor, was it the Florida game that was at home. It might have been. For them. It they might have been. It three, might, yeah, so. so Tennessee has just been spotty all year. They didn't move in the AP. So no. obviously they still respect them as a team. They lost a double overtime on the road. So that goes for yeah. Something. And once, like I said, once you get to overtime in a game, there's a lot of momentum yeah. that. I mean, based off of. I mean, honestly, for Tennessee to come back from a twenty-one point deficit. Forced double overtime against a and and for a and to still be able to hang on and win, again, I think that says a lot about yeah. someone and the Aggies' resiliency mm-hmm. and being able to finally knock Tennessee over into the, you know, the L column. really impressed with Trevor Knight. His numbers might not have spoken yeah. for what he truly played, but you know, based on who they've played before, this is their really big first test, and they handled it really well. Yeah, they absolutely. They really did. Absolutely. Yep. Next game that we're going to look at uh, was Alabama and Arkansas. Some people gave Arkansas a chance. Just because they were 16. Some people gave the them a chance coming into this game. It wasn't a total blowout, but it never really felt competitive. It didn't. It was kind of like the A&M, um, I think that when they played, it was a couple weeks ago, they played Arkansas. It was the same Arkansas team. Yeah. When Arkansas was kind of close, but then they just, they really never established yeah. themselves as in the game. Yeah. It, it, I mean, 49, 30, I mean... Obviously, Arkansas giving up 50 points to Bama. Just you too know. many turnovers. Yeah, they couldn't have just, that happen. It, it wasn't they could, they didn't play a clean enough <laughs> game to really give themselves a chance no. to Neither be Tennessee. competitive. Exactly. Seven turnovers. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah, three interceptions from Austin Allen. They had a chance. I think they were down like two scores and had a chance to come back in it, but threw that pick in the end of the mm-hmm. game. And, you know, just sealed their fate. Bama. That's another win for them. Yeah. R- along with the Ole Miss win, that uh, that would really help. So them. it's really it's going to be A and M and Bama. I mean, Pretty much, it's, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's your SEC. The good thing for Tennessee is that they're in the uh, the SEC East, and they already beat Florida, okay. so they already have a leg up, and that one loss isn't really going to kill them yet. But they do. This is a big game coming up for them against Bama. Oh yeah, this is huge for sure, for sure. And that leads us into our uh, last big game from this past weekend with the ACC matchup, uh, FSU and Miami. Now this came down really to a blocked PAT, uh, in. W- Honestly, one of the more physical games I've ever, probably the most physical game I've ever seen between two ACC schools. It was like Jim Fisher said, it was Miami Florida State. I, I mean, it, there were players going down all. Right, Kyle lost a tooth. Over the, I mean, <laughs> it was, the yeah, there was blood splattered on both sides. I mean, a really, really hard fought game. I, I'll, you know, I, I. Last week, I thought that FSU was down and they were out. I really did not you give them. You had Miami. Yep. I had Miami. I thought that Miami was going to win convincingly. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I did not think that the Jimbo Fisher was going to be able to rally the troops. I'm impressed with their performance, especially at Miami. Um, I, I think in terms of Miami, they hadn't played anybody yet, and we're going to get to this later. We'll talk about it. This was kind of their first big boy they, team even, they were playing. Even if they're not playing anyone, I don't think that you can discredit what they've been what they've been able to accomplish because with Houston. Everybody, Houston was six last week, and they hadn't played. A, they hadn't played anybody played except Oklahoma. for Oklahoma. Now Miami can't say that they played Georgia Tech. That was their best win. Right, but I still think that as far as you know, judging a team, I don't think that it's necessarily fair to base their skill <laughs> level or competency based off of like you know weak weak opponents. I, yes. I just didn't think because Miami's team last year, I didn't think was. So no, I understand. We we yeah. talked about this a good bit. We, you know, you made the comparison that, that Miami was the same team as, uh, you know, they were last year when Clemson beat them at 56, 58, yeah, nothing, yeah. whatever it was at Miami. But and I mean, I was at Deshaun's presser today, and he said, we, I don't remember what the what the question was, but it was talking about six and zero expectations for the postseason. Do you think this team can make a run? Is it special like twenty fifteen? 
And Deshaun was basically like, well, it's a totally different year. It's Probably a totally different team. Yeah. It was a totally different team. It's, it's a totally different um, environment. I mean, yeah, there are some players back. Yeah, the coaches are back. But, you know, every year you try and, and approach it with a different type of attitude. That's true. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Miami got, you know, beat down multiple times last year, which resulted in the firing of Al Golden. But at the same time, like, Mark Rick knows how to coach. And he he's does, a yeah. chippy he's a guy. Yeah. And I, I really, I mean, yeah, they lost this game on a block PAT, um, which just adds to the lore of that entire rivalry yeah. series. But at the same time, Miami's going to be back, and they're going to compete year in and year out for that Coastal Division. And it's good for college football. Yes. And I, don't, I don't think they're there yet. I don't think they were deserving of the ranking that they gave them. I, don't, I still don't think they're even a top 25 team. In really? Well, That's they, amazing they have no me, wins. Though. They have no wins to prove it. They're basically it's slotted the same with Western Michigan right now. I mean, Western I mean neither Michigan does Ohio State, either. and people got them. Ohio State beat Oklahoma. I mean, that's a, that's again. A I'm not sold on Oklahoma. I just don't. I mean, I mean, they're they're Baker Mayfield has been now. spotty a bit. So top you're telling me that Miami and Oklahoma play each other, and you're going to give the edge to Miami? I think Oklahoma hands down has more talent than Miami does. Wow. Think about it. Like I know you don't want to say that last year mattered, but the team that Miami had last year, they have Brad Kaya, but they haven't really gained anybody. They haven't gotten many skill players from last year. You know, into this year. No, but they still bring and Oklahoma in an returns a great roster. class. Well, yeah, but they're freshmen, like you said, young teams, young players aren't really. That's really why I'm yet. not as sold on Ohio State is because they're so young. And to, and we I know we talked about last week how you know being a younger team just increases the probability that that you will falter on a big stage. I just think that Miami, and I know it's only been a year removed from the debacle that was last season. I get that. But at the same time, it's a new coach, a coach that has done very well at an SEC school. Okay. That's a hard place. That's George is a hard place to hold a job. Yeah, it let's is. be honest. I mean, Kirby Smart's struggling. Yeah, he, he, he dog on right yeah. he is. So Mark Rick is no. I mean, I, I just don't see him. You know, leaving Miami in two to three years because he can't win. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this year's Miami team is not. What everyone thinks. So you they think are. that they need a different quarterback than Brad Kyer, or you just think they need weapons I on think offense? They need weapons and around them. I really do. They're not as talented. Well, they'll bring that in with recruiting. Yeah. Now that Miami is back competitive, watch. They'll have a top fifteen recruiting class. I wouldn't say they're competitive yet. They have if they they have Carolina, competitive with Florida State. They have UNC and they have Virginia Tech coming up. Those are two formidable opponents in the ACC Coastal. If they can contend with them and they can win the Coastal, then yeah, I'd say they're back. But if you look at their schedule, they beat Georgia Tech, Florida A and M, App State. I understand. And I understand that their schedules here. have been weak. Their out of conference schedule is a joke. I, I totally get that. I just but haven't seen enough. That's fine, but I'm just I, I'm I'm pretty confident that that within the next few years you're going to start seeing more and more crews go back to Miami because the you know maybe it may not be that the U is back, but it just might be that players are flocking to Mark Rick okay. because they want to play for him or you know they're from South Florida and they just want to go to Miami instead of going you know, up in Georgia yeah. or an SEC school. They're definitely more likely to go there now that Al Golden's out. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I think Florida State will still take a I lot of I think Miami's talent, much better off. I think they're much be – long term, I think they're much better off with, yeah. with Mark Ray. It was a great hire, but I don't think they're there yet. Give them a couple years. Possibly. Once they get the recruiting classes and get the talent going. So. Now we're going to move on to the ref segment. Again, same format as it has been. I'll ask you four questions. You'll offer your opinion. And if I you know, have a differing opinion, which is more than likely, then I will throw. Especially uh, with this first one we right, got. Right, the, the, the yellow flag. Um, so first question, what does this loss say about Miami and how does it shape the remainder of their season? I think it gives them confidence that they can play with a good team but I don't think they're there yet. They didn't pull out the win at home against the Florida State team that was really struggling. Like I said, they got the two teams coming up, Virginia Tech and North Carolina. I don't think they're there yet. Mm -hmm. and I think, well, they could do better than they did last year. I don't think they're, they're looking at winning, winning the Coastal quite yet. So where do you think they fall as far as bowl games? I mean, not, not necessarily New Year's Six, but what's – well, they went what should five. their goal be? What should their goal be for this season? If, if you really don't think that they can contend for the Coastal, what is the, what's their goal? What do they want to I – mean, it's, it's a rebuilding year, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a first-year coach. Well, obviously the Coastal is going to be the one you shoot for. Um, they went 8-5 and five last year and got just smacked around against big teams. Mm -hmm. And they competed against Florida State here. Yep. I think you just want to get better. I think you want to develop your young guys like they have, the recruiting class that came in. So I think Mark Rick wants to at least get 8-5 and because that's what they got last year. I think that's what he's shooting for at this point. 8-5 yeah, is a bowl loss. I mean, you don't, 
eight and four, you know, twelve game regular season. So okay, so eight and four. Eight and yeah. four would be yeah, that'd be a good season. Or they went seven and five or had a bowl. I, I mean, I think that you know you want to win a bowl, obviously. Um, but you know, it, it that's that's a tricky. I'm not going to say that I disagree with you. I just think that that is a trickier question because you know, if they, obviously they can't compete for an ACC championship mm-hmm. yet. I understand that. Um, and then the coastal. Excuse me, they were not quite there. I, I, you know, I concede that the fact with, with their loss to Florida State. Now, if they had beaten Florida State by one point, heck, we could be sitting here talking about how... I mean, when you lose on an extra point like that. Exactly. So that's why this win, or this loss, rather, for Miami feels a... It just doesn't... It doesn't feel as bad as it could have no, been. No, it, it, it was an extra point. It's better than they've been last year, but they didn't beat Florida State, and they didn't beat a team that really been struggling. They didn't, but again, extra point... And if you put them, Florida State, and Miami against you know Virginia Tech and UNC, I think Florida State would just fare better. I really, I would feel more comfortable on a team like Depends, that. Depends though. With with Florida State and Louisville, just lingers in the back of my mind. Yeah. It just it does. I, I can't. I mean, wow, they got whopped by and then by Louisville. Miami got beat by the team that got beat by Louisville. So that's by a point going a block field goal. They still got beat. I mean, they didn't beat. They them. did. They, it's fair. It's, it's it's fair. I agree. They're not there yet. And I think they got outplayed. I really did. Florida State really? looked, Florida State looked first half. First half was all Miami. First half, Florida State got in the red zone a few times and just didn't punch it. No, in. they, they didn't, didn't score. score until right before the half. So Miami was controlling that game, and then yeah. it almost reminded me of of back when Clemson lost to Carolina five years in a row, and it was like it, it just stuff just fell apart. It just like it, it would work for a couple quarters or work for a few drives, yeah. and then just crap would just start happening that you would just look at each other and you'd just be like, what what are we what are we what are we doing? Yeah. So. Yeah. I think Miami, for whatever reason right now, has a hump that they need to get over in Florida State. Maybe this isn't the year. I know I, that's a heartbreaking loss. That's a tough. Heartbreaking you had, loss. You had the win, and you had the yeah. fans there finally. Maybe next year they'll, 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 get, over the, they'll yeah. get over the hump. Anyway, next, next question. Uh, which team nin, win, excuse me, needs a win more, Stanford or Notre Dame? Um, I'm leaning to say Stanford. Because I think Notre Dame has already dug themselves such a deep hole. And oh. think about this. When we talked about does Brian Kelly need to win to keep his job, he's already locked up a six-year deal. So let's just say that his job is going to be fine. Oh, that, there's nothing. Brian Kelly is going to be – he's not leaving Notre Dame this year. He oh, will you not don't think it. so? He's not leaving Notre Dame this even year. Even if they don't make a bowl game? Because it's, I, it's even viable. Even if they don't make a bowl game. And they got Stanford. Yeah. They got USC. Well, if you look at Oklahoma when they had Bob Stoops, they didn't make a bowl game one year. They were like top ten. They went like five and seven. He stayed there. I don't think you – go one year and overreact like that. I think in terms of Stanford, Stanford was supposed to be, you know, a top seven team and they Christian McCaffrey was supposed to win the Heisman. I mean they got Should've a better player last year. Stanford's got the better player than any, any of the players in Notre Dame. I just I feel like Stanford needs Oh, so you, you would take you would take uh, Christian McCaffrey even though he's a little dinged up over Deshaun Kaiser right now? I think Stanford needs to get back on track because they still have a they still have something to contend for. They've had two blowout losses in a row. They They've still been have in... something to contend for though. Notre Dame's got at this point they're two no Notre they're Dame's nothing. Notre Dame's season is, is a wash. I agree yeah. with you there, but but Stanford they're not competing for for what a bowl game. Well, I mean they they have two losses in the Pac-12. They're realistically probably not going to win it. They'd have they, to lose Washington would have to lose what three games yeah. in their con- they, because they hold the tiebreaker. Mm-hmm. So so let's see. Stanford got killed by Washington and then they lost to Washington State. So here's my reasoning. Stanford still has a chance to make this an okay year. Notre Dame, this is already a big letdown. This even is if why win, Notre Dame needs to win more. But even if they win, they're still three and four. If Stanford wins, they're four and two. They still look like it's a pretty good year. I think Notre Dame is already the fans. If Notre Dame loses this game, it's they're two and five. They're already th- it'd be three and four though. I mean, it's not that much better. There's a big difference between three and four and two and five. When you I, have I just, five losses in week seven. I just think for Stanford, they've already lost two in a row. If they can win this, they already get back on track. I don't. I, I gotta disagree because I think that this it's is close. This is Brian Kelly's job it. right here. If he loses, if he loses yeah. this game, think about how bad Stanford has played the last two weeks. Yeah. If he loses that game, Notre Dame fans are gonna be like, "What are we doing with this Joker? Get him, get him out of here!" If, with the yeah. way Stanford's played the last two weeks, and Christian McCaffrey has done nothing, and Notre Dame can't even beat them. Brian Kelly's gone. I mean, they already lost to NC State and Duke. Yes, but that was a hurricane condition game. They lost to Duke. Have you seen the last two games that Stanford's played? It has been a joke. Do you, do you think a Stanford win would make Notre Dame feel better, or do you think a Notre Dame win would make Stanford I don't think it would better? make them feel better. It would be a hollow win because they'd be like, well, we beat them, but Which they're trash. Which team would feel better with a win, though? 
Stanford beating Notre Dame or Notre Dame beating Stanford? Because they already feel Stanford bad. Stanford would feel Duke. better with a win because I think that, like you said a little bit ago, they're they're on the. They realize they're almost in free fall. If yeah. they lose to Notre Dame, <laughs> this is the Notre Dame's already in free fall. You, exactly, exactly. So Notre Dame needs to stop the free yeah. fall as soon as possible. Stanford is right there on the cliff, and all it's going to take is one push, and they're over, and they're. So they. At this at this point, to me, a, a loss to Notre Dame looks a lot worse for for Stanford than a loss to Stanford. Stanford, Stanford has for played Notre Dame. terrible these last two Notre weeks. Dame lost to Duke. Yes, but and, that was a competitive State. game, though, and Duke is not. Washington State and Washington are the good teams. The point is, is with the way that Stanford has played these last two weeks, I think it's, it, I think Notre, it's Dame, worse than Notre Dame. For Notre Dame to lose to Stanford, who's played terrible the last two weeks, and now be two and five, how Brian Kelly holds his job after that is a mystery to me. That just does not make doesn't make good sense. Yeah, I just You've got to get rid of Brian Kelly if he can't beat Stanford, especially with how they play. Stanford, though. You've seen their last two weeks, though. Have you seen Notre Dame's last two weeks? If they lose, the to a game team they played against Duke, NC State was in a hurricane. If they lost, the players sliding from me to the camera on the lost field. lost to Duke. If you're Stanford, that's red flags, man. Stanford, red Stanford flags. lost to Washington by a landslide. They lost to Washington State. I think it was like what, 42 to 10 going Washington into the. Washington State is a good team. They're a good 42 team. 42 to 10 going into the fourth quarter. Washington and Washington State are better than NC State and Duke. Uh, we got to move on. I, I, no, no, no. Notre Dame. They is, both need a win, but I think, oh, agree. I think Stanford no. needs it more. All right. Are Louisville's college football playoff hopes gone with this Houston loss? I wouldn't say completely gone yet. Um, well, what has to happen besides, they Houston, still besides have the a fact chance. that they beat Houston? Or they the ACC, Houston. Clemson, if Clemson falls out, I, 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 think, I don't know. I think Louisville's the closest team along with Michigan or, you know, whoever you want to say. The closest team that does, has, is not going to win a conference championship to get in. We could say that. Right. Right. I agreed there. Um, I, just the way they played Clemson, I think they people saw they're a really strong team. And even if they still be Houston, I mean, Houston's still going to be a top 15 team if they went out and get to that game. It's not going to look the uh, same, but yeah. I mean, Navy's, Navy's a solid team that Houston that doesn't, that doesn't really, it doesn't give Houston a buy. I don't think they're completely gone I, yet. I think there's realistic circumstances where they could still get in. Oh, I agree. Um, I, I think that they're still in the hunt. They're on the outside looking in. It's just tough because we don't know what's going to happen yet. We yeah. just have no idea. Yeah, you can't predict. I mean, they may very well lose to yeah. a no-name school and then all that just goes straight out the window. But And Louisville's schedule is really favorable from this point out. They don't play any hard teams. For right now, because of the poll system, they're mm-hmm. on the outside looking in. Whether or not that's the right decision, we'll have to talk, talk about that when we get to our top four. Yeah. Um, but last question to, to go ahead and wrap this up uh, for the ref segment. Is Nebraska a sleeper? 5-0, and top 10. Nobody's really talked about Nebraska at yeah. all this year. Are they a sleeper for the Big Ten Championship? I think to me it's kind of like West Virginia. They have a chance, but I don't think they're going to do it. Um, yeah. They haven't played anybody yet. I mean, they, they, yes, the but that they, doesn't matter. What I mean, do you mean it doesn't matter? That just that's because, all we have to go off of. Exactly, but they've beaten everyone they've played. So so what? They, they barely beat them? Oregon. They barely beat Illinois. Everybody has they bad. They were losing before. to Illinois we in the barely fourth beat, quarter. We barely beat Troy. So you yeah, can say beat, this. But we beat Louisville. I mean, you have a good win. Oh, okay. Nebraska has no big wins yet to prove anything. Now, they have the Ohio State and Wisconsin games coming up, so I don't think you can really put Nebraska, Nebraska. If I looked at their schedule. It's, it's, it's ridiculously favorable. The only games that really challenge them are at Wisconsin and at Ohio it's State. Make break their year. Back yeah. to back. They should be worst, worst case scenario, 9-3. and three. Mm-hmm. Probably 10-2, maybe 11-1 and one, if, they get, if, they, if they get lucky. 11-1. and one. So I say, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like they're. I mean, yeah. At this point, they're, they're talented. Kind of, to me, they're kind of like Iowa last year. They're a talented. Oh no, team. I think I, Iowa was. Everybody could tell Iowa was fake. I don't think Nebraska's fake. I don't think they're they're yeah. that bad. Maybe a little bit better than Iowa, but I don't think they're quite there yet. I just haven't seen anything I, yet. I think Tommy Armstrong is a good player, and you haven't seen him because you haven't watched them. I have watched them. You've watched, watched Nebraska. Them all, Nebraska. Watched yeah. them all last year. I watched a couple games this year. They've struggled, but Tommy Armstrong's a good quarterback. Yes, but that just, I mean, we, every team struggles, uh, that, except Alabama. <laughs> but uh, but we, we played terrible against Troy, and, and so that does that argument, that's where you lose me. You're like, well, they haven't played anybody. Well, that's that's the thing. They haven't, they haven't proven anything. Well, they've yet. beaten everyone they've played. They're Doesn't that count for barely, something? you got to look Houston at how they played a, and who they played. Houston, ha, up to that point. Oklahoma, up to th- Nebraska has no big wins. 
I, they're still admit to me that they're going to get nine wins this season. Okay, they always get nine wins. Nine, and nine three wins at against least. who? Though? That doesn't mean anything. We're Big talking 10. about strong teams here. Big Ten stronger than the Big Twelve. I don't think they're in the top ten, number ten team in the country at this point. Just from what I've seen, they haven't proved anything. That's how you they're, rank they're teams. Top is how ten. They prove. They're top ten because they're undefeated. I can agree with that. The, they shouldn't be top ten. Maybe top fifteen. Maybe top twenty. Somewhere in the 15, 16 range. Uh, but I absolutely think that they could, if if crazy crap started happening. They should be down where West Virginia is right now. West Virginia is in the 20s. And they're they're 5 and 0 also. They're, then they're yeah. undefeated in the 20s. That's where Nebraska should be. As well. I, I don't. They're. I think they're better than people are giving them credit for. Honestly, five. I mean, honestly. again, they're undefeated. Yeah. Top. I know they're top 10, but just the the way their schedule shapes up. If if crazy things started happening to Ohio State and it was kind, they could slip in easily. They're in the other division. At this point, I think they're like Miami. The numbers, what is it with the number 10 team in the country always being so ah, weak? I don't know. First Miami, now Nebraska. I don't know. That, I don't that, know. Wraps, up, that wraps up the, the ref segment. So now we're going to move on and look at one big thing from each of the Power Five conferences, starting with the ACC. Um, you know, honestly, the, I think the biggest story from, you know, this past weekend was the, the hurricane games. Yeah. Uh, NC State Notre Dame in particular because – I mean, there was standing water on it most of the I field. Mean, and, and, and literally the only way that NC State won this game was on a block punt that was returned that for t- touchdown. That was the only way they were going to score a touchdown. Yeah, there was two field goals yeah. that were made from like 30 yards, and that was it. <laughs> it reminded me a lot of the Baylor TCU game last year that was just underwater. Yeah. And there were probably 10 fumbles in this game. Not not much going on, really. I mean, besides the Florida State-Miami game, you we know, kind of already addressed game. that. The Coastal yeah. is starting to shape up now. It's Indeed. going to be interesting coming up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. And then moving on, Big Ten – uh, you know, Ohio State, they had struggles struggles early with Indiana, but they took no, they care didn't. of them. It was 3-3 three, three at one point. I and mean, the first quarter, well, every game, of course, is close in the beginning. Okay, fine. Ohio State took care of Indiana because we, we know how sold you are on Ohio State. 38-17. And that sets, up, you that, ma- you that sets up a matchup with Wisconsin. Now, is that game, is that at Wisconsin or is that going I to be? I believe it's at Wisconsin. Okay, so, so do you, I mean... That's a tough place to play. It is. Now, I still give – I do think that Ohio State is good enough to win at Wisconsin. Are you on that boat as well? Oh, I think they'll win. I think okay. their offense, um, JT Barrett, is just going to be too much for Wisconsin. Wisconsin was barely able to score seven points against Michigan. I that's, think they're going to need – That's why. I just – their offense can't keep up. They just can't. It doesn't they, matter how loud it is. It's and when you saw they put up 30 against Michigan State, well, who's the Michigan State team we're really looking at right now? They put up 30 against a weak squad. My point was Stanford. That's my point with Stanford and Notre Dame. Like, but, but yeah, I, I what do you I just, mean? What are you trying to say? Well, with like what you said, what Michigan State team is going to show up to play, and that's my thing with Stanford is like they've been so terrible these last two weeks. Going back to the the question about Notre Dame, who needs to well, win worse? We'll go back to the, we'll talk about the Washington thing later, but that's kind of my point too. You're you're strengthening my argument here, saying Stanford was really bad for Washington with the way that Washington has played against them and Oregon. But who they play? Stanford and Oregon. We'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. Moving on. You got no chance to win that argument. Moving on. Big 12, uh, the Red River rivalry game. Really, a, a really. I mean, it was a good game to watch, honestly. Offensive I, outburst. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Uh, kind of, in my opinion, saved Oklahoma's season, spoils Texas a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's just that's the game that Texas plays mm-hmm. every time is they play a high-scoring game with no defense. They still haven't fixed it yet. Yeah, Charlie Strong, if, if he wants to really hang around at Texas, he's got – He's got to find a defense. Really, the only thing he has Somehow. going for him right now is they have, they have a young roster. And they can say, oh, well, we'll improve in the next two to three years. But that puts him at 0-2 in the Big 12. Yeah, and I, recruiting is never an issue for no. Texas. So there's really no – after three or four years yeah, – I'm talking about like they have young players right now. That right, I, get, yeah, I, yeah, I understand yeah. that. But like at the same time, I mean, there's – you can't use that excuse forever. You you know? can. Oh, we're going to have two or three years. I mean, you're getting good no, guys man. every year, Texas. And the do problem, something with the them. The problem is you look at their schedule. It's, they're playing the Big 12, which they have some hard teams coming yeah. up that they got to play. They do have a tricky schedule. They're already schedule. Yep, so. yep, yep. Finally, uh, Pac-12, kind of two things here. We, you know, we talked about this pretty extensively. Stanford slide, it continues. Yep. Pretty much at the, uh, you know, almost at free fall. And Mainly the McCaffrey slide. Continues. Well, he's a little dinged up, but yeah, overall, I mean, it's it's been ugly. And then Oregon, a complete oh my mess. Gosh. They're not the same Oregon team we had uh, with Mariota a couple years ago. I mean, they, ago. you know, they gave up what seventy to. They gave up seventy. Which yeah, you usually see them see them scoring those. Points. Well, that's the most that they've ever allowed since since nineteen forty one. Second yeah. most ever. 
Um, and they're off to their worst start at two and four in, in 30 years. So, and they've given up, they have given up 197 points wow. in that four game slot. I'd love to see them in Texas play because I feel like that game would be like 67 to 65 because there's zero defense. I mean, what happened to Oregon? They were two oh, years ago, they were man. playing for the national championship. That, that goes to show how good Mariota was and how he really yeah. made them a good team. I mean, it was kind of like. Because no, their recruiting hasn't been terrible. No, I mean, it hasn't been awful. I mean, they've, they have some players. They, they had the guy last year come from over from Eastern Washington. He was mm-hmm. a good quarterback. They mm-hmm. just haven't had the full team. Yeah. You know? I, Oregon's just, whew, they fell off the face of the map. They really did. Quick. They are I mean, digging really in a quick sand at this quick. point. Yeah. I mean, almost out of nowhere. They were gone. Everybody's like, where's Oregon? Oh, yeah, I mean, they struggled last four. year. They may not make a bowl game. That's With the Pac-12? Unacceptable. That's unacceptable for Oregon. Oh, expectations now. Well, yeah. yeah, it doesn't help when you had expectations well, it, it, of championships. Well, this reminds me, I don't know if Auburn was this. Well, no, I take that back. Yeah. Gene Chizik. <laughs> Gene Chizik, it was what? He won it in 2010 with Cam Newton, and then 2012 is when he got fired, and they went 2-10 and 10 or 3-9. and nine. Um, I think they went th- they went three and nine the year before they made the championship. I think. No, that was a couple years after he did. He was he was awful and they fired him. It, that's what this reminds okay. me of. Yeah, is yeah, is yeah. the the ascension to national prominence and then just they disappear because they had Cam and now they have Mariota. Yeah, Auburn really has not done too much the last. No, I mean they're not talking about now. They've but, been spotty. Yeah, they're just not the same Auburn spotty. team. Yep. And then finally to wrap up the Power Five, we look at the SEC. Uh, Texas A&M, you know, they're, they're, they outlast Tennessee in, in double OT. Uh, you know, one of the better games from this weekend. Uh, you know, game. we talked about it a little bit yeah. earlier. And, um, you know, with, with A&M, I'm becoming more sold on someone and, you know, nine, and the fact that he's a fifth-year senior. Because this, yeah. is, this is what I didn't realize. This is the first time in someone's you know, tenure at A&M that he's had an upperclassman start at quarterback. Wow. I mean, think about it. They you had know, Manziel, Manziel and, and Kenny Hill. Exactly. So yeah. you got a fifth-year senior. He's been around. He's been there, done that. I think A and M can give Alabama a good run for their money. It's gonna. This is just like they've had the last couple of years. They had with Manziel. They had it with Kenny Hill. They started great. They mm-hmm. were five and zero oh at like both times. But, the, but experience. Yeah. Now experience. that's what they, now that's what they have. Experience. Hopefully, this experience will get them over that hump right. and maybe if they don't so, be Bama, so, still so make maybe, plays up the Europe, maybe, Europe well. maybe experience has something to do with your performance. Maybe Ohio State, you know, but JT they're so Bear, young. JT Barrett's an experienced quarterback. You want to talk is, about experience here. But we're, we're, you know, the youngest team in the country. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's talent. I got a lot of talent. Talent doesn't mean anything if you can't do anything with it, though. You get in that pressure situation. Oh, if you got talent, though, I mean, they've done plenty with it That's so what like Dabo says, though. As coaches, all we can do is put players in position to make plays. As a player, you've got to make those plays. It doesn't matter how talented so you are. They've made all the plays they need to. They have. Year. They have. But that, that lends to my argument as to why I'm just not sold on Ohio State. Because when I look I at teams like young. A&M. I know they're young. That, yep. That's all I'm saying. But Ohio State's not A&M. They're to- totally different teams. Fair yeah. enough. Totally different teams. Fair enough. Well, that wraps up the, the Power Five you know, rundown. And then now we're going to do our top four you know, current playoff bracket and, and look at those. So do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? I'll go first. That's fine. Okay. Fun. I had, let's see, number one, I had, uh, still with Clemson, I still mm-hmm. think, you know, they, they finally started clicking their offense. This is, I think, the best game they've played all year, top to bottom. I know it was a weak point against Boston College, but they really impressed me. The uh, way yeah, I, I, I can buy that argument. Yep. Okay. Um, and then number two, I still had Louisville. Um, I still think those are the top two teams in the country. Nothing's changed that yet. Mm-hmm. Number three, still Ohio State. Big test this weekend. Um, if they can handle Wisconsin pretty, pretty well, unlike what Michigan did. Maybe you, can right. slide them, maybe you can slide them past Louisville. I don't know. But one, two, three, I think are really, really strong at this point. Oh, yeah. And then number four, I finally had to put Bama in. I had them, I had them out last week at number five. I just think with the, the quality win they had against Arkansas, now they have Ole Miss and Arkansas. Washington just doesn't have that qual- those quality wins to match up. So, Right. I now, who did that. you have the first two out? Did you have a five and six? I had Washington, and then I believe I had Michigan at six. No, I had Texas A&M. Okay, and you had, had A&M. Okay, yep. gotcha. My but top my top four is is pretty different from yours. I think we had two teams that were in the same spot at two and four. Um, I have I have Ohio State at six as the second team out again because they're young and just the fact that and and, I, and a second once I listed all my teams, I want to go through you know offensive performance and, and statistics and how those match up with the top six that I have. But I have Ohio State at six. I have Clemson at five. 
Clemson dropped out of the t- I know. Clemson dropped wow. out of the top four for me because they they Were played fifty six to ten win against BC. What, what did they, they played well that? against BC, but again, Deshaun and Gallman echoed the sentiment again today. They hadn't played their best football. When the if the players are saying, "Yeah, that's as good as we're going to play, coach," then I can be like, "Okay, Clemson, this is as good as we're going to get." And but that's the best part is we've done this with. I understand. Even our I understand. Best yet. But like I said last week, thus far, Alabama at four, Michigan at three, Louisville at two, and Washington at one. Washington, the way that they have played the last couple weeks, and again, the only reason I have them jumping Louisville is because Louisville's on the bye. That's, okay. They 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 right. walloped Oregon. But I mean, you got to look at who they played, though. I mean, it can it can look great when you play right, really but well. They, it, it's still the 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 fashion in which they beat them was just so absolutely. We beat Louisville, who is currently your number two team. Washington beat Stanford. I would we've who been over basically out of the top twenty. At this we've point. been over this argument as to why Louisville, why I have Louisville higher than Clemson, and that is because, and I'm I still firmly believe that if the game is played on a neutral location, for example, let's say both teams make the college football playoff, okay. it's the semifinal game. Uh, what would it be? Number two Louisville, number three Clemson, something like that. Yeah, they play each other. You don't think Louisville's not going to be out for blood? Louisville is going to be are. hungry for right. that game. So in that matchup, I give the edge to Louisville. We won the game with five turnovers. Louisville, Lamar Jackson played fantastic. We still were able to beat that him. third quarter. That's well, of course. that's yeah, the only thing holding me back. If quarter. we hadn't have played, so I mean, think about the game for a second, Bradley. We didn't score the first quarter. Okay. We didn't score. We put up twenty-eight in the second quarter. We, we didn't score the first quarter. We didn't score the third quarter. We, we played horrible, almost as bad as we did against Troy. Okay. Better opponent, but still terrible. We, we, we started coming back in the fourth quarter and put up points in the second half. The only way we contended in that game was, was through our second quarter performance of 28 points in like eight or nine minutes or something. Well, we turned the ball over in the red zone. We had offense I, going. And that's my point. When you do that kind of stuff on a neutral location against a team like Alabama, Washington. Have you seen Washington? Bro, we're not going to have five turnovers every game. Washington has scored 297 points this year thus far. That's Who second in the country. That doesn't matter. They're, it doesn't matter who they played. It, if they're, it doesn't matter. They're killing them. They're Baylor killing them week in, week out. A few years ago, and they had the most points in the country. Didn't matter. Look, look though. They've they've only allowed eighty five. They they've scored two hundred ninety seven okay. points, and they've only allowed eighty five. Michigan actually, this is something I did not realize. They clock in at number one. They've scored three hundred points this year. They had season. about a third of those in the Rutgers. Do you know how many? They, do you know how many they've given up? 62. Okay. They have scored 300 points and given up 64. Let's look at Ohio State for a second. They're they're you know almost equally impressive. Less points than Michigan they've given up. They've they've scored 266. They've given up only 54. So defensively, impressive. I mean you can look at statistics but, but, like what, what, this points for. But points you're trying to tell me that J T Barrett is more dynamic than Michigan's offense, and here I am telling you that Michigan scored more. Okay. Now, th- well, J- don't tell me JT Barrett is not a better quarterback than Wilton Spade. Are you kidding me? It's right an now? offense, though. It's not a single man system. I mean, you can't. I mean, yes, one player has a huge effect on the game, whether it's Deshaun or Lamar or okay, thirty-four whoever. points. What? It's they had twenty more points in the Rutgers game. Ohio State. Just the didn't point score is, is when Rutgers. I look at my teams that I have, I have Washington number one. They're second in the country in points for. I have Louisville at number two. They're third in the country at points for. I have Michigan at three. They're number one in the country points scored. Alabama at four. They're fifth in the country at points scored. Now, now listen to this, because this is going to shock you, because I bet you did. Clemson, right? I have them at five. Guess where they rank nationally? 16th. 16th. We had a rough start. We didn't play as well the first. We've crept up, though. We have. Yeah. But We're not rise, even though. in the top 15. We're 6-0 and with the best win in the country. Offensively. I don't care. We Offensively, we cannot contend right now if we play football like we're continuing to play football. Okay. We cannot contend with Washington, Louisville, and even Michigan on a neutral playing surface. But they haven't played us, though. They haven't played a team like us, though. They've played Rutgers and Colorado. But all we've played is like Troy. That. Or, I'm sorry, all we've played is Louisville. That's it. That's our one game. Auburn's a solid team. Auburn's in the top 25. 
at right now. They're four. Okay, and do two. they really deserve to be in the top twenty-five? I mean, they're a decent SEC school at this point. Yeah, they're, 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 they're. You never know with Auburn. Let's just be honest. Colorado. You never know. You never know with Auburn. My point is this: when you look at the offensive production of the of the of the teams that I have in the top six, Clemson is is they are eight spots away from the nearest competitor, which is Ohio State, and I have them ranked lower than Clemson. You can put too much on it. How do you put Clemson ahead of teams that have scored more and have more offensive production and better defensive statistics? Better opponents they have played. Clemson had to play Lamar Jackson. Besides Louisville, that's it. That's it. We've played Georgia Tech. We've played Auburn. We've played Boston College. Two other cupcake games. Okay, you can't put all your marbles into these points for. No, I understand. If we would have done that a few years ago, you'd have like UT San Antonio. I understand. Well, I think Western Michigan right now is tied for like fourth or something in points. Exactly. My point is my point is this: the reason that I don't have Clemson in the top five is because I hear week in, week out from players that they're pressers. We haven't played our best football. I look at statistics and see that we are well behind the other leading teams in the country when it comes to offensive production and defensive efficiency. We're just not as good right now. Right now, it may change. may change. They may get Alabama with the stretch that they're going into. Who knows? They may drop. You just never know. But when Alabama puts up 49 on Arkansas, who a lot of people consider them a favorable opponent, and they just... I mean, throttled them. I mean, it was never a close game, and and we have. I mean, yeah, we played against, played well against BC and Georgia Tech, but but, but Troy and those kinds of performances linger in the back of my mind, and I realize, wait a second, we're good. Clemson's capable of a lot. I think we're capable of going to the national championship like we did last year, but we we haven't. I know what we're capable of. I haven't seen it yet. When I see it, when I see it. What do you need to see? I need to see. Do you want us to put 65 on Florida State? Is that what you want? I think you really. So far, we've got, taken care of you, business. Look now. here. If, if Clemson can't handle Florida State like Louisville did, raises some questions. We're on the road, first of all. Florida State has gotten a little bit better since then. Gotten a little bit better. They were number two in the country when Louisville played them. Well, you telling me they weren't good when Louisville they, played and them? And they lost to UNC, but they beat Miami. So if they, they lost to UNC playing, on a freak last but second if they start field playing goal. Better, you know, I'm just saying when Louisville played when they were number two in the country. Dude. It'd be on the road, first of all. I don't think you, So that's it? I don't think you have to blow out a team 63-20 to 20 to prove anybody. The point is, is Louisville has done that. Washington has done that. Michigan has done that. Alabama has done that. Ohio State, yeah, they're getting there. Clemson, we've done it. We're, 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 we didn't do so well against a top-tier opponent like Louisville. If we play that same type of game where we're really crap for three quarters and then somehow have a miraculous second, third, fourth, first you think quarter. You Michigan can keep up with Louisville and Washington? They played Wisconsin They've and scored, scored 14 points, man. I understand, but... If Ohio State puts up 49 points against them, what do you say? I that? think, honestly, what you would, what I really want to see in the semifinal... Not, again, I want Clemson in. I want Clemson in. But a Michigan-Alabama game and a Louisville-Washington game or, or a Clemson-Washington game, whatever, would be... Oh, my gosh. I would love to play Washington. Incredible. We, we would take them, man. We would absolutely take... They haven't proven anything against a big opponent yet. They're, they're playing in the Pac-12. Their week-in, week-out schedule But they haven't played a top-tier team And we yet. did, and we struggled. And mightily, we won. Mightily. We won. Because it was at home. You we the- won the game, and that's all that matters, man. <sighs> that's why we're up in the polls, because we won. I'm just trying to explain to you why. And I, I, look, I, credit to Clemson, because, you know, it's hard to come off a national championship and it's year. hard to win a game with five turnovers against the Louisville. Absolutely. Game. We should have lost the game. You and I were sitting there in the, in the stands in the fourth quarter looking at each other with about eight minutes left going, wow, we're going to give this game away. We're going we're gonna to give it to them. So there were some moments. There were Troy, <laughs> when, when it was halftime. I have no idea how to explain that. And, and everybody was just like, we're, we're beating them by three. What's, it, what's it going like on? It was Wisconsin-Georgia State game. Yeah. I mean, so so there, we've had our moments where everybody's just been like, Clemson, what, what are you doing? Alabama hasn't had that. Michigan hasn't had that. Louisville hasn't had that. I except for us. Right except for now. us. Washington has not had a moment like that. Even Ohio State has not had a moment like that. They just haven't had moments where you sit there and you look at them and you go, what are you doing? Are you trying to give this game away? I see what that you're saying. That is my only – That that's my that's my major – that and the lack of offensive production I still think you can put them outside the top four at this point. They're undefeated with a win against Louisville. That's all you need. That's all you need. To Alabama's play. performance against – Arkansas bumps them up 
in addition to Michigan's performance against Rutgers. I know it was Rutgers. I know. You're going to use that. But they beat them 78 to nothing. Who cares? Who cares? It was Rutgers. They did what they needed to do, though. Ohio State beat them 58 nothing. So they didn't score 78. Well, was then I got Ohio State at 6. I know Clemson played very well against BC. You can't they use the Rutgers them. game to decide who is the better team. I'm just saying that, again, they haven't had a scare. None of those teams that I have in the top four have had scares yet this season. Now, if that changes next week. I mean, Ole Miss, Alabama, almost lost that one. I mean, it wasn't as, it wasn't as bad as our performance against, against Louisville. No, no, but I, it was never a, it was never like, wow, are you watching this? Alabama's going to lose type game. I mean, it was it was close for a little while, but excuse me, never felt like it was going to be an upset. I mean, come on, come on. That's, you, you can say all you want about Troy. We didn't play great. La- just look at last year. We didn't play great in the beginning of the year, and look how we got up. We started I, to play a lot better. We, played, I just we think, beat Louisville. I, again, we beat BC. I think for right now, Clemson's an extremely talented team. I don't discredit anything they've done this far, but. I know, I know what we're capable of. I just haven't seen it. When I start seeing it, then and there's two totally or, different sides. Or, or other teams that. falter. You say that, and I say we haven't played our best yet, and look where we are now. So that's possibly. I, I mean, it, I see what you're saying. You probably see what I'm saying. But. If if we run the table and you know we play very well against Florida State or even mediocre, and we go on to win the ACC championship, then absolutely I'll have Clemson in the top four, and absolutely they're deserving of going back to the semifinal. Then your ACC championship. You know, ACC champion, absolutely. Yeah. But I just take a very non poll esque approach. And I just I look at it rankings. as when you're playing in the playoff, you're playing the top. See, players. I feel like you have Clemson at one just solely based on the fact that they beat Louisville. That's it's that. I mean, I mean why else would you put them at one? Explain to me. We've beaten Louisville. I I know we played bad in the Troy game. We're looking better. We beat Louisville, who is your number two team overall in the country. Who's my number two team overall in the country? Okay, is that is that it? That's all you need. To be number one in the country. Undefeated. Alabama, Alabama isn't going to, they, they don't stand a chance. No way. I didn't say that. I said we are more deserving of number one. We have the best because win. Because we beat Louisville? We have the best win in the country. We're undefeated. I think we're a great team. I think we could play with we, any of these We teams. have a win against one of the better teams in the country. We do not have the best win. It was not the best performance. What's the best win? Against the best team. <sighs> And you beat that team. That's, that's considered tough. the best win. That, no, that, that's tough. Um, I'll say Washington against Stanford. No, not with not with how Stanford has fallen off. I, I I think right now, you could probably you you could say Washington Oregon, but Oregon's fallen so far off. I, I think it would either be one of Michigan's dominating performances, or it would be one of Alabama's performances. Uh, whether it be Arkansas or whatever. Again, Clemson has had, Clemson definitely, I agree. They have, because it's true, they have one of the, they have a win against one of the better teams in the country. So right now the only thing holding you back is that Clemson didn't look as strong at the beginning of the year. They they just haven't played the best yet. They just gave you some questions. They just haven't played the best. These other four teams, until they start to falter, they're going to say where they are. But if if the playoff came out today, Clemson wouldn't be out of the playoff. No, no, that's how the poll system works. Louisville as as and they don't deserve to be in the, and out un- of the top four team wise. So you don't think Louisville should get in? No, no, no. I'm saying Clemson deserves to be there. You can put them one through four. Right, right you want. now, yeah. I mean, I'm not really ranking them based off. I'm ranking them based off who I think are the top five. Like who are the best? Who are the best teams thus far? The be- not the most deserving. I don't. Get, not everybody gets a trophy. Who are the best? Who are the, the top six teams? Might be the best team. Not necessarily. If you, if I think, you're the I best think, team, you deserve to be. I one. still think Louisville's the best team. The only reason I have Washington at one is because Louisville is on a bye. But I think that Washington or Louisville is the best team. But they're right now they're on the outside looking in. There's nothing you, else they can do except win out and hope that somebody loses. I, I think you just got to look at who we've played and who they've played. Washington just doesn't have it for me yet. And they've killed. They everyone. haven't played a top. They're going to play. All they've done is lose to us. All they've done is lose to us. These teams are going to play top teams when they play in the playoff. Alabama, their best wins, Ole Miss. They That's barely thus beat them. far. They're going to, if, what if they beat A&M? What if Alabama – hold on now. What we're if not, Alabama – We're not looking at that. We're I know. At who but, is but right that's, now. But, but the conversation arises because if Alabama just, let's just say, takes it to A&M after what A&M has proven thus far this season – Tune in next week then to figure that's it out. That's all – I mean, seriously, if they take it to A&M, are you not going to put them at one or two? Really? I'll put them above Ohio State. Absolutely. So two. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, what? 
Are you Depends kidding? Depends on Ohio, if Ohio State destroys Wisconsin. If Alabama destroys A and M, there it is criminal not to put them at one or two and have Clemson they above would... them. Come on now, there's no way. Listen, listen. I put them one too. Clemson beat Louisville. I put Alabama Barely. above Louisville. Alabama destroyed A and M. It's Alabama for right now. Come on, come on. But you think Louisville's better than Texas A and M? If so far A and M, they're a good team. That's a good they're question. They're great because A and M. All we have to all we have to look at is that they barely squeaked by Tennessee and almost gave it away. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Do you now, think A and M is as good as Louisville? I wish I could do one A, one B, one C because at this point, three teams have really just separated themselves to me. Yeah, it, it's a lot less clouded than it you know has been a previous. You know, because a lot of teams that were undefeated coming in this week lost. I think it was like twenty something that were undefeated coming in, and Round there's 11. like eleven now. Um, Anyway, we've probably gone on off on a tangent there for about 20 minutes. But that, that, those were our top four. Again, you had your top four. List them out again just so everybody re- remembers them real quick. You had? My top four? Mm-hmm. I had uh, Clemson, Louisville, Ohio State, and uh, Alabama. And I had Washington at one, Louisville at two, Michigan at three, and Bama at four. So now we're going to go to Twitter questions, different yep. polls that we've done throughout the week. You have some of those pulled up. Yep, we got some uh, some good tweets sent in. We got Mark Wright who sent out a question: Whose loss hurts worse, UNC or Miami? I'd probably say UNC. Just the, they got blown out 34-3. That puts them at hmm. one behind Virginia Tech. It's tough to dig out of. Uh, Miami. Miami, Miami. The way that they lost, it's just gut wrenching. But think I, of the. Coastal. I didn't care who won, and I was just like. Oh, that sucks. You think sucks. losing 20 to 19 is worse than getting 34 to 3? It was, a, it was the game was in a damn hurricane. They got blown out. They man. lost on a they lost on a missed PAT at home with, you know, the whole hype of Miami's UNC back in the top 10, hype. not like Miami hype. Miami they was put in the top that doesn't matter they yeah. had it. Miami fans were already I mean, it, you knew that if they beat Florida State, well they were going to be singing like larks from the tops of trees. Seriously, they were going to want to put them in the top six, seven, maybe five. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, Miami would have been up there. So I think that, that the, the way that they lost the game and just – I think if they've lost now seven in a row to the Seminoles, that, that loss hurts worse. I would go to UNC. You go Miami. Yeah. Both bad losses. Yeah. Uh, next question from Hunter Huckabee. Do Dobbs and Hurd in Tennessee stand a chance against the number one team in the nation? Do they stand a chance against Alabama? Against Alabama? I stand a chance, but I just think that it's at home, right? I just think that Tennessee, going back to how spotty they've been at times, like they've had really good game or good stretches in a game, and then they'll have really bad stretches in a game. He ain't gonna come back against twenty-one against Bama. Maybe if they get yeah, down, if they won't. get down by more than two, t- more than ten points. Game's over. And I think it's like the Texas a and They had magic, but it wasn't magic against good teams. They ain't like going to have that much magic against Bama. Uh, Jarrett Wright, what is the name of the NC State second-string center? Look it up. Yeah, not not sure we can pull up that one on the fly. Uh, Jake Wassler, he says, Jay, your point scored theory is bogus. <laughs> Who do you have in this semifinal, Clemson or Michigan? I guess which team? It, Clemson versus Michigan. If it was number two Clemson versus number three Michigan, who would you have? Wow. Good question. That is a really first of all. Let's tough address question. your first point. Your point score theory is complete bogus. Let's just say that. No. That, that's Let me offense. give you one stat in the NFL right now. Guess who is number two overall in scoring? In the NFL? Yes. What's that got to do with just, college football? Just go with me here. The okay. San Diego Chargers. They're not the second best team in the country. Okay. So no. point scored isn't everything. But that's the NFL. This everything. is college football. I'm just saying when you score points, it, does, it you got it matters who you play. It doesn't matter who. You score how much you score. Right, but again, the point goes back to the fact that Clemson. You you admitted to me. You have admitted to me that the only legitimate team that we've played thus far is Louisville. Then why? Auburn too. Who? Auburn. Okay. They're on the same level as Arkansas. We'll, for we'll just say Louisville. We're 16th in points scored. We're we're not offensively. We're six and zero. That numbers never lie. There's a, I mean, numbers never lie. Neither do six and zero with the number one win in the country. When he gets one of the better teams in the country, he's not the number one win. I, I, say what you want about the I points. Mean, look, do a definition. Look, I'm just search, saying. Man. Look at the. Look, look, you can say whatever you want about points score and offensive and, and all that jazz, but I'm just telling you that at the end of the day, when you look at Clemson's offensive production, 
versus the other teams that are in the top six, seven, eight, wherever, we are way, way behind. So you think Michigan can outscore Louisville? I, right now, Michigan has three hundred points. If Michigan can find a way, if Michigan can find a way to contain Lamar Jackson, I mean, we kind of did it for if, a stretch. Good luck with that. We did it for a little while. For a little while, he still put up what thirty? I give, I give how many the points. Nod, I give the nod to Louisville. I think they're the best points. team in the country still. So, I, no, they're not. You said Washington. No, I said that's because Louisville was on a bye. Okay. I, that's the only reason I have Washington at one. In that particular it's a weak game, but okay. <laughs> no, not, not really. I mean, they were on a bye. You got to, I mean. Well, if they didn't do anything to harm themselves. Okay, the anyway, anyway the, I, would, I would pick Clemson in that game because experience and Deshaun Watson. They're a more experienced team than Michigan, even though I think Michigan would give them a heck of a game. That would be a fourth quarter type game. All right, we just got a, a message in from uh, Jack McLaughlin. Could Texas a and Bama and UT have a triangle of death where they all lose to someone? If so, does that eliminate all of them from the playoff? No, it doesn't eliminate them. It all could happen, playoff. but I don't think it would limit. It would no. not eliminate them. Who, who would the how how does the tiebreak work? You know, for the second like, what's the second tiebreak in the SEC? Is it common opponents? Well, right now it would it be, better not be points scored. I'm it laugh. would be common opponents because right now Tennessee is in the East and Tennessee would. Okay. It would be between Bama and A&M for the SEC West. Gotcha. So whoever won that game would get the crown. No, that that you, SEC champion could probably lose two games and still feasibly get in. I mean, I, wouldn't you agree? I mean, there's no. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I think I think that they'll that one of those three will get in. All right. More likely and A&M and, th- or Bama. I think. Let's see. Let's see if we have any other questions. Um, So we had one other. Yeah, my brother said, Ryan Kendall said, if the NFL draft was tomorrow, who would you pick first pick? Oh, That's gosh. A good question. Wow. Who it's would thinking I? way ahead. Yeah, no kidding. Um, that's a re- okay, that's a really tough question. If you have somebody, feel free, because uh, I-, I wouldn't take Lamar just well, because Lamar has one more year, well, so he's not going to be yeah, in the NFL and, draft. Yeah, and I mean, just like, he's too small as a... He's Bill Peppers. For Michigan, yeah. he's one of the most athletic guys I've ever seen. Who's going to be first in the draft this year? That's the better question. Uh, if it was the Chicago Bears, they would be taking the Sean Watson. You think so? No yeah, you would That's think. That's one of the only teams I can think of that really doesn't have a. Uh, a you know, uh, I saw some quarterbacks were were uh, not as high as Deshaun, but they were pretty close. Sean's um, up there. I'm trying to remember. I don't pay attention much to that during Kiper. the season. Yeah, during the season with we'll college football. Later, but I would put I'm watching college point. football. I don't know who's going to be picking where. But good question. I it's mean, that's question. something that yeah, you just definitely yeah. don't think of too often. Uh, and then now we're going to try and do our upcoming week preview. We're going to look at all the top 25 team games uh, in five minutes. So that that's the goal there. Uh, we'll go ahead and pull up. The, I will pull up the rankings. Yep. Okay, right. so we'll start at the bottom. Maybe. And hold on, let me, I'll get my timer ready so we can five go ahead minutes, and right? yep, get the whole thing out in five minutes. Um, but and we you only, want to do some picks? What do you want to do? Yeah, we can go through, do, do uh, some quick picks, but um, yeah, we'll, see, we'll see where we get. So, yeah, like now, said with Navy. The Navy game, I think it's postponed because they play East Carolina, and I got an update today that says the weather mm-hmm. is going to permit, not permit them for playing this week. So that... We'll skip forward with that. Yep. Western Michigan and Akron. Western Michigan, they're 6-0. and um, And <laughs> la- last year, they played Michigan State really well, so I knew they were kind of a solid um, yeah. out-of-power five team coming into it. They'll probably be, I don't know much about Akron. They'll probably be I a, don't know much about either of these two teams, so I'm going to give the nod to Western Michigan. Go with the right team. Yeah. Um, Auburn's on a bye, uh, so we'll skip ahead to Arkansas. They have uh, Ole against Miss. Ole Miss. Tough game, but I think that the Rebels pulled that one out. I'll probably go with Ole Miss. I think the QB battle is really interesting because Austin Allen, once again, is such a great quarterback. Um, I, I think it's going to be a really close game, but I'll yep. get the nod to Ole Miss. Utah at Oregon State. I give the, uh, the, the nod to the Utes. They're going to go to 6-1. and one. Oregon State's been really let down this year. I'll go yep. with Utah, too. West Virginia uh, at Texas Tech. They're 4-0. They're the only 4-0 team right now in the country because everybody else is either 5-0 or 6-0. I think West Virginia keeps going. I'm going to go with the upset pick. I'm going Texas Tech. I think their quarterback play is great. Gotcha. Uh, they had a, two really close losses this year, and it's on the road. So I'm going to gotcha. go with Texas Tech. Oklahoma at 19. They host Kansas State. Yeah, Boomer Sooner, I guess. We'll, we'll go roll with them. 4-2. 4-2. Yep. Florida at 18. They are hosting Missouri. 
I think Florida. Florida no could way. Florida could show up with the JV team and beat no Missouri way this Florida year. No this. Yeah, nope. that, that, that game has uh, already been decided. Virginia Tech at 17. They travel to Syracuse. Do you see the Carrier Dome causing any problems? Sneaky game coming off a big win for Virginia Tech, but I think for, I think they're riding too high to lose this game. Okay. Fuente won't let them lose. Miami, they dropped to 16 after their loss to Florida State. They host UNC, so two, game, two teams yeah. that are on – a losing streak right now, but I'm gonna have to go with UNC. Really, I'm gonna have to go with UNC. I think just because you were talking about the weather, the weather really impacted that game. I yeah. think UNC's offense is much better than Miami's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I just I was never a firm believer in Miami and North Carolina. I'm going Canes. I think Mark Rick at home will get that one done. Boise State at 15 or five and zero. Oh. They host Colorado State. I think Boise State. I'll go Boise State too. Yep. yep. Florida State at 14. They host Wake Forest. Seminoles. Should go Seminoles. Yeah. Wake might give them a little bit of trouble. Well, they were 4-0 for a while. They did a couple years ago. I don't, I don't see that would be too much of a trip up If game. they're able to come back from all the right. injuries they had. Houston at 13. They host Tulsa. I think the Cougars will rebound. They'll get 6-1. and one. Oh, they'll definitely rebound. Greg Ward will get them going. Yep. Old Miss at 12. They travel to oh, – we talked we'll about this game this earlier. Game. Yeah, yep. we already picked that one, so we'll move Baylor, on. Baylor, Kansas. I think Baylor. Poor Kansas. Shout out to the Jayhawks. They had a chance. Oh, I know. Almost beat TCU. Missed, but the, missed the field goal. I think period. Baylor's offense is just going to be too much. Baylor, 6-0. and Would you have expected that? Wow. Yeah, 6-0. Yeah. and Nebraska, also they're 5-0. They're in the top 10 now. Bit of a sleeper team. They travel, we talked about this earlier, to Indiana. But I see Nebraska winning the game. I said they could be close because it's on the road. Indiana's 3-2 and two or 4-2. and two. They're a decent team, and they struggle with Illinois. And Nebraska did so. I'm going to go Nebraska, though. Okay, Nebraska, I was about to say, don't, don't pick Indiana. <laughs> Uh, Tennessee at nine, big boy. Bama's too much. Playing Bama. Bama's I don't, just too much. I don't see Tennessee winning They're this looking game. for revenge, but I, I just think Bama's yep. going to take Bama's gonna take the roll tired roll for that one. Uh, Wisconsin, they are going to be playing. They're hosting Ohio State. This isn't even going to be close. Really? Ohio State's going to run over them. I think that Ohio State will win. I do think that Wisconsin will give them more of a game than you're anticipating. I think it'll be fourth quarter, maybe maybe seven to ten point margin of victory, but I yeah. do think that the Buckeyes are going to get this one done. Yeah, they, I don't know. I'll go to Ohio State. Yep. Louisville, uh, they host Duke. I think Louisville. Ooh, oh, be, really? I, I'm going to go Louisville. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I do not let so your, bad, your Duke <laughs> fandom blind you, please. That's, Louisville, that's, it's, it's sorry for sorry for David Cutcliffe and the gang. A&M, right. Washington, and Michigan are all on buys, so we'll skip them. That brings us up to Clemson and NC State. We're going to skip that one because mm -hmm. that's our game that we'll preview in a second. And the top two we already took care of. Yeah, we looked at Ohio State and Wisconsin and, and Alabama and Tennessee. So went through that in four minutes. That was better than I expected. We um, had a couple of disagreements, I think. You picked uh, Miami. And I picked UNC, and then I picked Texas yeah. Tech. Over West but, but honestly, not not a whole lot. I shouldn't see a whole lot of shifting this week. You should In the top 25. I mean, now, unless. I mean, you do have the Tennessee-Bama game, and you have the Ohio State-Wisconsin game. So but top besides 10, that, now, it shouldn't be. We say that sometimes during the week, and true. it proves us wrong. So this we'll is see. true. But again, with four through six on buys, um, now, I mean, theoretically, if Alabama and Ohio State lost, you could see Clemson at one because you know Michigan, could, Washington, A yeah. and M are all on buys, and also you could see Louisville jump um, a, at least a couple spots because those teams are on buys. You know that, true, that remains true. to be seen. Yep. So, but anyway, that's been uh, our top twenty-five, uh, you know, game uh, upcoming week uh, preview, and now we're going to move on to the game this weekend between the Tigers and NC State, and to preview me, this a little looks bit a lot of action. Much bigger of a game because NC State's four and one. Coming yeah. off a win against Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, they played as tough, was it last year? It was like 58-41, to 41, wasn't it? It was a close game. Yeah, last year last year was 56-41 in 56 Raleigh. Uh, the last game in Clemson in, in 2014, Clemson won 41 to nothing. Uh, and we've won four in a row overall, six in a row at home. Yeah, so at home, 12 total. At home, and, and actually uh, Dave, and, Dave Doran, I think is, is uh, the name of the coach for NC State. He's 0-3 against Clemson. He's never beaten us. Yeah. So bo task. Yeah, bodes well. We lead the all-time series 55-28-1. Now, nine of the last 18 games, nine, nine out of the last 19 games have been decided by eight points or less. Yes. So, that's worth so it, it has been, and NC State has kind of always been one of those teams that, like we talked about Georgia Tech, even though Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech normally squeaks it out on us. Um, where they give us a little bit more trouble than they should. Reminds me of the basketball team. They're always just so yeah. pesky. Yeah. So, I, but, I mean, if you look at the Atlantic right now, I mean, Clemson and NC State are both at the top. Uh, you know, they're, you know, Clemson's 3-0 and in ACC play. NC State's 1-0. and Louisville with 2-1 and because of that loss. But 
I don't really see NC State as like a sleeper for the Atlantic. At any I don't see them as a big threat. I think no. we'll, it's at home for us. I think we'll be in good shape. Uh, now, it's worth noting there that NC State's quarterback, uh, Ryan Finley, mm-hmm. he is the fourth best completion percentage in the country. Wow. And that's including the game they had in the rain. So he's, he's having a pretty he strong year. He probably didn't year. throw the ball too much, though, during that But game. still, I mean, his completion percentage couldn't have been that good. He's had nine touchdowns yet to throw an interception, so turnovers might not be. Oh, that's impressive. They're good on turnovers. So I think if uh, this is a better state team than we've seen in years past, I mean, they've definitely gotten better. Mm-hmm. Um, I could see I could see us winning, like, 42-24 or something. Oh, so you think it's it's not very – I mean, two I think or three we'll, touchdowns? Mm-hmm. Two or three touchdowns? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll be in good shape. It should be over by the end of the third quarter, and we'll be look, cruising through the I, quarter. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that we'll come out uh, strong. I do think that NC State's better than some people are giving them credit for. Um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put too much on the Notre Dame win because of the I'm conditions. I'm going to look at schedule. The conditions play. and the, the, the way – I just – the entire game, uh, it was not like NC State miraculous. I mean, they did miraculously pull it off, but there wasn't like yeah, it a wasn't sustained, like out. excellent performance throughout the game that led yep. them to beating Notre Dame. So, yeah, it was kind of a hollow so, win. They could be pesky. They could hang around. I just I think our offense has really been clicking At home. Lately. We should be okay. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Yeah, we should. It could be like the Georgia Tech game a few years ago. I think we won like 33-16 or something like that. Maybe we, a we touchdown or, or two yeah. lead at the half, and then by the third quarter, starting to, yep. to pull away. Um, now, we've we got really good offensive production last game. The run game was really good, especially against Boston College. Yes. Uh, there's a stat here. We, Clemson is 78-0-1 and and when we gain at least 200 yards rushing and 200 yards passing. So, really, the 200 run, yards rushing is a lot. To, it is. That's a lot to ask for, though. That's what you want to get is a lot of rushing. For sure. That's what we got to look for with Goldman. For yep. sure, yeah. And, and, you know, looking at the fact that we're 6-0, and um, that's the fourth time in the last five years, uh, and with the win last uh, Friday against BC, you know, we talked about Clemson had a, a eh record in Friday games, even though they're not that common. Yeah. It was actually our first regular season Friday win since 1952. I can't imagine we played that much. It, it, probably not too many, but again, it, it was a pretty historic night. Um, and uh, this is interesting. This is also the first time since 1988 that Clemson and NC State enter the game having played at least five games and both teams having a winning, winning mm. percentage better than .8. Okay. So yep. historically, it well, has. I don't hasn't, think we've usually played them this early, so that could. Impact I do. Them a bit, yeah. I, it, I mean, yep. the textile bowl has always kind of been towards the, the 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 end of the season. But again, when you look at our home, we've won 19 straight at home. That's a school record, longest active streak in the nation. We've won, and this is also really interesting, 42 consecutive games against teams who were not ranked. Do you know who our last loss was to? Unranked team, you said. Yep. It's a South Carolina. No, it was NC State. Was it really? Our last loss to an unranked team was, was NC State. Tech, we won wow. 42 consecutive games, uh, and we've also won 12 consecutive conference games. Um, okay. You know, again, with our last, you know, our record the last two years, obviously our only loss has been to Alabama in the postseason. Um, and another stat that, again, really isn't that big of a, it's just an interesting tidbit. We're the only school in the Power Five to have at least three road wins this season. Wow. So go. we travel well. That's something that could be beneficial. That's why with the, the Clemson, Michigan, you know, when Jake tweeted out about what, who you'd pick, I would give the edge to Clemson just because the road test has, we, we've passed the road test thus far this season. Just don't see how you can say that and still have Michigan ahead of them, but. Oh, that, there's a lot of jumbling around that'll happen before. It's tough to predict. It the really end of the season. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, we're not even getting paid. We're just doing this for fun. Whereas yeah. you got people on ESPN that are, you know, getting paid to uh, predict games, and you know they may be more or less accurate than the weatherman, but it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. It's all in good fun. So, but I, I see Clemson winning handily. You know, like, I think we'll be in, like I think you we'll said, be okay. probably in the 40s, mid 40s for us, and maybe upper 20s, maybe low 30s for NC State. Yeah. They'll, really they'll want put to see us, offensive performance. Really want to see us have a complete game, though. Yeah. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for us. For Bradley Kendall, I'm Jay Smith, and this has been After Further Review. We'll see you next week. Hit us up on Twitter, at Review Show. Thank you for watching. What you doing? Same thing out there. Oh. Did you cut us off? Uh. May have. Text him real quick.
don't see him in the back. He might be off to the side. He's probably in the meeting. Well, we're used to it from last week being on a little extra time. So yeah, I mean, we haven't I, seen before. I know that I know that I'm going to get a lot of flack, even though I already have about the top like five, six, and I know that Clemson being out of the top four is going to tick a lot of people off. It's just I think that. Just, I haven't seen, I know I know what they're capable of. I know what they're capable of. I just haven't seen it yet. And again, you have the players saying that at the pressers today. That was one of the first things Deshaun said. Mm-hmm. He's like, shoot, we haven't played our best game yet. Yeah, he, Mark says we're still on, so I think we're about to be off. Are we? Okay. Yep, Freddie's back there. Cutting us off. Good. We'll see y'all next yep. week.